So today I have on my wrist the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. So I have been wearing this watch for a few days now and I've spent enough time with it to give you my full detailed review. Now I do need to quickly mention this is not a review unit. I bought this watch myself. Luckily Samsung dispatched it a little earlier than launch and to get the record straight Samsung has actually never sent me a review unit. They don't like honest reviewers. I actually prefer to buy my own Samsung shit. This way I'm not restricted in my review and I can be fully blunt and honest in my review. Now the new Galaxy Watch 4 is very similar in dimensions to the previous Galaxy Watch 3. So very similar size in diameter and thickness is also very similar. But you have an upgraded chipset, some extra health features which we will be checking out and there are a few cosmetic changes that you can probably see immediately. Now the prices start from 379 US or 369 pounds in the UK for the Bluetooth model, which I have here. The LTE version will cost you $429 or 409 pounds in the UK. And considering the previous Galaxy Watch 3 launched at 429 for the Bluetooth model, this Galaxy Watch 4 Classic is certainly on the right path with a lower launch price. And the standard Galaxy Watch 4 model is even cheaper and my full review for that watch is coming very soon. So do stay tuned. So quick look at what you get inside the box. So we've got the smartwatch, you've got some paperwork in there which I'm not even going to look at. And you've got a magnetic USB charger. This is the same charger that you get with the Galaxy Watch 3. So they work with each other. Uh, so if you've already got a Galaxy Watch 3 charger, you can use it with the Galaxy Watch 4. Now I have been quite excited about this watch, especially with the new edition of Wear OS with Samsung's Tizen OS skin on top. So when you're actually using the watch, it just feels like Tizen OS. And having used both Wear OS and Tizen OS quite thoroughly, I really like how the OS is looking on this watch. Now I will put the specs on the screen so you guys can have a quick read. Design is quite reminiscent to the Galaxy Watch 3. The body is made from stainless steel finished in black and you're getting the same 5ATM IP68 waterproof rating along with military standard 810G durability. Now on the front you are looking at a 1.4 inch Super AMOLED display with a screen resolution of 450 by 450. So that's actually a higher resolution than the Galaxy Watch 3. You have Gorilla Glass 3 protection on the front and the spinning rotating bezel is back. So yes, you're getting that same satisfying feeling when you rotate that bezel. One of the best features I've experienced in any smartwatch, any brand, is Samsung's rotating bezel, which is why I immediately pre-ordered this as soon as I saw it available in the Samsung store. Now this watch is powered by the Exynos W920, which is a dual core clocked at 1.18 gigahertz, and you've got 1.5 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage. So compared to GW3, you've got an upgraded CPU, upgraded RAM, and double the internal storage. Now there is still Bluetooth version 5, you've got built-in 4 satellite GPS, you've got dual band Wi-Fi, NFC, and this is running the Wear OS powered by Samsung. And so far, I have to say, I am loving everything about this OS. And more detail on the OS a little bit later in the video. Furthermore, I picked up the Bluetooth model, which is around £40 cheaper than the LTE version. And it does mean that the watch needs to connect to your smartphone uh, via Bluetooth in order to sync all your health data. And it uses the newer Bluetooth version 5 connection. But as this watch has a dedicated GPS already, if you're going for a run, you can still leave your smartphone at home. You can go for a run. And when you get back home, the watch will sync all your health data with your phone and you're up to date again. Now with the LTE model, you can leave your phone at home, go for a jog, and you can still receive your phone calls and messages directly on the watch. And you have 4G internet available at all times. Now for me personally, I don't need internet when I'm going for a jog, as I just use the built-in health tracking. And also music, I just copy over some MP3s to the internal storage. So that means I don't really need the LTE. And also you get a better battery life with the Bluetooth version, as it's not constantly connected to the net. So yes, you can still make and receive Bluetooth phone calls. As long as you have your phone nearby, it actually works really well. And here is a quick call sample. So when you receive a phone call, so you can answer the call by touching any of those icons or you can turn the bezel. 
to answer the call. Hello? Hi. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? No, yeah, good. I'm just testing your sweet voice out on my smartwatch, my brand new smartwatch, the Galaxy Watch 4. It's the classic model. And All uh, right, cool. Yeah, what are you up to? Just chilling. Yeah, I'll catch up with you later on then, yeah? Does my voice... Sure, no how does my voice sound? I nearly forgot to ask you. Yeah, does it sound like I'm talking to you from a watch or from a phone? Can you tell? No, no, I couldn't tell at all. Awesome. It's, it's really clear. Awesome, awesome. Good stuff. I'll, I'll chat to you later, yeah? Take care. See you later. See you later. Take care. Bye. Amazing. So as you guys just heard, that was a crystal clear phone call. You could hear her voice very clearly and I was talking from a distance and yet she could hear my voice clearly. So I'm very happy with the built-in speaker and microphone quality. So now we're going to test out a WhatsApp message. Okay, just received a notification. And there is a WhatsApp message. That's a, a very nice WhatsApp message. This is not a text message, people. This is a WhatsApp message, and you can actually reply directly on the watch. So many different options and ways you can reply. So you've got microphone, voice, emojis, and a keyboard. So I wanna quickly show you standard keyboard, first of all. So enter a message. So if I, hi, you've got autocorrect there. and predictive texting. How space R space Y O U. Used to be really fast at that back in the day. Send. Sending. Done. So I just sent my WhatsApp reply directly on the smartwatch as you guys saw. And if we get a reply back, yes. I like how it just pops up. Now, voice, emojis. I won't press send this time just so Look at that, emojis are there, you've got categories, smileys, everything. you got, I wanna just test this out to see how well it works. So we just do, wow. And you don't have to wait for it, you can just draw away, that is brilliant. And you got autocorrect. Now, and voice. So I am responding to your WhatsApp with my voice. That is amazing people. So not only can you reply to text messages, you can reply to WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, um, everything works, Snapchat, everything can be replied to. You can see there's a notification right there and it tells you with the logo that it's a WhatsApp message. All right, now I'm gonna show you what happens if you receive a WhatsApp phone call. So it says answer call on the phone. So WhatsApp phone calls do not work, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, okay, let me call you back, yeah? All right, sorry, bye. sorry about that, bye, bye. Yeah. So, so as I just showed you guys, you can't take WhatsApp phone calls directly on the watch, but you can, however, reply to all notifications. And you might be wondering which phone I'm using this with. Well, I'm using it with a Samsung Galaxy S21 because I wanted to test out full functionality. And full functionality is within its own ecosystem, so Samsung and Samsung only. And if you try to connect to any other Android smartphone, the blood pressure monitoring and ECG monitoring will not work. So there will be a compatibility issue. And if you've got an iPhone, this time around, you can completely forget about it because there is no compatibility with iPhone, which is a huge, huge shame because I really enjoyed using my GW3 with my iPhone. I actually still use my GW3 with my iPhone. So it's such a shame that they got rid of that um, feature. I think it is completely compatible, but this was more of a rival thing. Uh, Samsung's trying to make a better watch than Apple and they're trying to push their own ecosystem and it wouldn't make sense for them to allow us to use this with our iPhones. So hopefully a firmware update changes that, but as it stands, you cannot use this with your iPhone. Let's talk about the battery size. You've got 361 milliamp hours. The Galaxy Watch 3 has 340 milliamp hours. So a very slight increase in battery size. But this watch is not running Tizen OS. We have a new version of Wear OS, but it's designed to look more like Tizen, uh, which is not a bad thing because I really, really like Tizen. But unfortunately, the battery life is not as good. Now, from my experience of all Wear OS watches, Hardly any of them, apart from the TicWatch 3, last more than two days. Most of them last one day.
So this smartwatch, the Galaxy Watch 4, will not give you that two days as quoted on the Samsung website. With normal usage, so that's Wi-Fi on, all my notifications coming through for email, SMS, WhatsApp, and social media, brightness set to automatic, and always on display, completely off. This watch will only last 18 hours, and that's with light use people. If I start downloading apps or watch faces or play around with the OS, the battery will rinse very quickly. So yeah, I am quite disappointed with the battery life. Um, when Samsung quoted two days, alarm bells started ringing because it's always gonna be less than what you get quoted on their website. So yeah, you will need the charger at night before you go to sleep. Also, if you plan on switching on that always on display, then the battery will not even give you a whole day. It's gonna be more like 10 to 12 hours. The thing is, this is normal. Google Wear OS is not an energy efficient smartwatch OS. From all my experiences of using Google Wear OS, this has been the end result every single time. Now, you need the charger more often than you would like to. Maybe a firmware update will improve things slightly, but as it stands, I'm actually preferring the battery life on the Galaxy Watch 3 and all the previous Galaxy Watches, including the active models, compared to the new Galaxy Watch 4. And it is all very familiar to me. Wear OS just likes consuming juice. I've had that experience on nearly all Wear OS watches. And the only Wear OS watch that I've tested that has a decent battery life is the Tick Watch Pro 3. Full comparison coming soon. Now the watch dimensions are 45.5 millimeters in diameter with an 11 millimeter thickness and it weighs 76.4 grams with the straps on. Yes, I weighed it myself. Now the straps are made from silicon and they are actually smaller straps than the Galaxy Watch 3. So you have 20 millimeter straps. They are removable and designed to be water friendly. And the Galaxy Watch 4 is very comfortable on the wrist. And in case you're wondering, I do have a wrist circumference of seven inches. So yes, nice big screen watch, classic rotating bezel, beautiful stainless steel finish. I love how this watch looks and feels on my wrist. The watch does look professional at the same time. You've got that elegance about it. Um, definitely a smart looking watch. And as usual, to give you an idea of the size, I will bring in the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. So here they are side by side. And as you can see, they do look quite similar. The Galaxy Watch 3 is 45 millimeters versus 45.5 millimeters. Although not very noticeable when you've got them side by side, they look the same. If not, the bezels on the GW4 look slightly slimmer than the GW3. You've got 1.4 inch displays on both. And the weight is 82.1 grams versus 76.4 grams. So it looks like they somehow managed to make the GW4 a little lighter than the GW3. Also, the buttons are slightly differently shaped. Not only that, if you look on the back, the Galaxy Watch 4 is more flat. The health sensors don't protrude, so it's more of a flat design. Whereas the Galaxy Watch 3 health sensors protrude slightly and you can see and feel that curve. So it will be quite interesting to see how accurate the health sensors are. Now coming back to the Galaxy Watch 4, on the side we have two buttons, a power button and a back button. And on the other side we have a speaker which is located just under the side. Uh, you can see the small speaker grills there. And that is basically it, you've got nothing else on this side. And at the bottom we have our health sensors and this watch does support wireless charging. And as I already mentioned, the charger is exactly the same one that you get with the Galaxy Watch 3. So magnetic USB charger plug this into a five watt USB source and it takes around two hours to fully charge this watch and you can share charges with the Galaxy Watch 3 if you need to. All right, so now it's time to check out the watch faces and features. So here is the default watch face. So interesting looking watch face with a bit of color on the side, better resolution, so 450 by 450 resolution and you can tell when you look at the watch faces. And you have a large number of watch faces built in and to change all you do is keep the center press for two seconds and then you'll be presented with loads of watch faces and I just like to scroll them with the rotating dial. You can check them out. Funky one right there with a the bear. So lots of watch faces included as standard, but you can also download so many. So you can go to the Play Store, more watch faces. It will take you to the Google Play Store and then you're spoiled for choice. Not only can you download so many watch faces, you can download watch face customizable apps like Facer and there's so many others. So you can have thousands and thousands of watch faces. There are so many free watch faces that you can download immediately. I'll quickly show you one of them. This is free. And if you scroll down, 
it will give you a description and screenshots of what the watch face looks like. Spoil for choice when it comes to watch faces. And here are a few examples of some of my favorite watch faces on this watch. So amazing selection of watch faces and not only can you change the watch face from the watch, you can also change the watch face from your smartwatch. So you can see a whole bunch of watch faces and the reason I'm showing you this is I want to show you this animated watch face to show you how cool it is. Check this out. There's a watch face called Friends and it just animates all the way through and it just keeps animating and it just keeps animating and it looks so cool on that screen and you can see how good that resolution looks. So really nice interactive watch face. Yeah, there's loads to choose from. And while we're here, we're gonna have a quick look at the smartphone app. So if we go back, so this is the Galaxy wearable app. Um, as soon as you open it up, it shows you your watch face on the top and it lets you know your battery life as well. So 21% battery. There is an update for the software. Um, there is a firmware update available and I will be doing that in a bit and it is a security and stability update So there's no new features. So I didn't do the update yet. I thought I'll do it straight after um, There's no improvement in the battery or anything like that if there was I would have updated it first So you got your watch faces apps tiles and quick panels. So I'll quickly show you watch faces and They are customizable watch faces so you can customize this for example friends you can choose character clock type complications everything Wow so really nice to see customizable watch faces, um, lots of options. And you can see in the background how quickly it changes a watch face. No messing around, no waiting two minutes or three minutes for it to download. They just change instantly, really fast. Look at that. So those are your watch faces. You've got apps, you've got reorder apps, app settings and app info. I'll quickly show you. So that is how the apps display on the watch. I'll show you that in a bit properly. So you can reorder the apps, you can put stuff, move stuff around how you want it. If we go back, you've got tiles. So that's your health tiles when you swipe left and right. Again, you can reorder, you can change things around and you can do all of this customization directly on the watch. And I'll show you that in a sec. We've got quick panel. So that's your quick panel when you drop down from the top as so. And again, all customizable. You've got watch settings. So notifications, sound and vibration, display, advanced features, battery, manage content, general accessibility, accounts and backup, and you've got the watch update. So so on and so forth. Answer calls with gestures. So I want to show you that. You can answer the call. If a phone call comes, all you're doing is that motion and the call will get answered. So I've kept it off. I have tried it. It does work. So you, you can also dismiss alerts and calls. So rotate your wrist twice to dismiss the alerts and that graphic should show you exactly what I'm talking about. So you just do it. So you're just doing that twice and it will reject the call. I personally leave the gestures off. I want any excuse to rotate that bezel. Okay, let's go back. So that was a smartphone app, but you also have the Samsung health app where it will show you all your health at a glance. And I've been using Samsung health app for a very long time. I love the app. It's really good. It shows you your steps, your daily activity, exercise, food. It's got the sleep there. I actually had a power nap at 11 a.m. today and I woke up at 12.54, one hour, 30 minutes. Body composition, we'll talk about that later. You've got heart rate, stress, water, blood oxygen, blood pressure monitoring does work, people, surprisingly well, ECG monitoring. And under together, you've got uh, so many events that you can participate in. So you're participating and kind of competing with the world. If you click on August one, you can see yourself there. And you can see the flag and it kind of tells you where everybody else is. And you kind of want to get to 2000 steps 
3,500 steps and the total of 20,000 steps. And you want to see how quickly you want to do that. And finally, you have something called fitness. So you can do various fitness programs, watch fitness videos. Um, you've got fitness blogs and stuff you can read. Quite useful if you're trying to improve your health. Um, Samsung Health Monitor, which is the third app you need to use if you want to check your blood pressure and ECG monitoring. So this is where all your health monitoring will be saved. Yeah, we're gonna be testing all of that later. So that's all the smartphone apps out the way. Now let's check out these smartwatch features. So if you swipe down from the top, you've got your quick toggles, stuff like brightness, um, battery information, settings, airplane mode, can all be toggled from here. Um, I really like the brightness. Now bright, my brightness is set on automatic, but I wanna show you how bright this gets. Check it out, people, that is really bright. Um, let's just switch the brightness down. I always leave it about just under halfway, and that's still very bright. Now, if you swipe to the right, you've got your notifications. All your messages, emails, tips, everything will be, will be pushed to the notifications, and you can reply to more or less everything on the watch. Now, if you swipe to the left, you've got your health tiles, what I showed you on the phone. So over here, you've got your health at a glance, so it's kind of like rings, but it's a heart shaped. So you can see your steps, distance, and calorie. If you swipe again, you've got your workouts. If we hit more, you will then have access to so many workouts and yes your sport for choice there are so many including swimming hiking weight machine exercise bike treadmill and you can even add workouts and there are so many recommendations there look at that so a huge list of workouts that can be added and the workouts that you do the most it will remember and it will keep them over here on the front i really enjoy initiating workouts i'll show you what a workout looks like very quickly. So swipe right to pause and finish. Hit start. It gives you a little countdown, three, two, one. Graphically very pleasing. And there you go. So that's the duration, distance, and steps. The heart rate is constantly on. Um, you can swipe up for more information like calories. Um, you've got your average heart rate. Now, if we go back to the top, swipe left for music. And then if you swipe right, you can pause the workout. Um, if you're not walking, it does automatically pause anyway. The watch is smart enough to know whether you're walking or not. Um, you can finish the workout here or resume. I'm just gonna finish it and come out of it. So those were your workouts. If we swipe again, you've got your body metrics. So if we tap on measure, it will ask you your current weight. So if we just put the current weight in. So make sure the watch is on tightly. All you're doing is putting two fingers on each button and then you will see what happens. Tells you what to do. Keep touching both keys, 100%. So now it will give you all your information, your weight, your skeletal muscle, your fat mass, your body water, your BMI, etc. Now if we swipe again, you've got your sleep tracking. The one hour, 30 minutes with a sleep score. If you tap it, you can get detailed information. You can scroll down. It will let you know how long you're sleeping. It will let you know how many calories you burnt because you do burn calories while you're sleeping, believe it or not. You've got sleep stages awake, I didn't quite get into deep sleep, so I was uh, only light sleeping. It was a light nap. And you can turn a few things on, so you can have blood oxygen on while you're sleeping. And I've left it off because I like my battery life. You've got snoring detection as well. Again, I kept it off because it does, it does rinse a lot of battery life. So I've got basic sleep tracking on. I don't need to test my um, blood oxygen while I'm sleeping. But if you did need to, you've got the option. If we swipe again, you've got your local weather. Again, you can tap any of these tiles for detailed information. Swipe again, calendar. There's, that's what a notification looks like, people. That was a Facebook notification popping up and letting me know as well. So blood pressure monitoring, we're gonna test in a minute. ECG, you've got your regular heart rate sensor. You can test your stress levels. You've got blood oxygen monitoring. So these are the challenges which I showed you on the phone. Then you can hit add tiles. So you can customize these tiles directly on the watch. So if there's anything you want to add from here, you can add them. So for example, I want to add my health summary and that's going to be on the last page. So there you go. I've just added health summary. If you want to move things around, just keep the center pressed and then you can delete stuff that you don't want or you can even move stuff around. So blood oxygen monitoring could be moved to a closer position. So I've just put it in front of blood pressure and just like that, you can change things around as you please. So highly customizable features on this watch. Now, if you swipe up from the bottom, here are your apps. Now to quickly show you what these apps are, I bring up my smartphone, which is a much easier way of doing it. So 
You can see recent apps, phone, contacts, Samsung, Samsung Health Monitoring, Messaging, Google Play Store, Google Maps, Compass, Settings, Find My Phone, Weather, you got Bixby, Calendar, Samsung Pay, Timer, Alarm and Stopwatch, World Clock Gallery and Buds Controller. You've got Media Controller, Music and Camera Controller. You've got Outlook, Reminder, Voice Recorder, Calculator, Samsung Global Goals, Messages, YouTube, Music and Spotify. Just quickly open the calculator just to show you what that looks like. So you have a mini calculator there where you can do some calculations when needed. 244 plus 9. I really like how that's presented. Nice and neat. Hit the back button. Quick look at Spotify to show you what to expect. So it's basically a Spotify remote. Music will play uh, on your phone. Okay, so open up Spotify. Find something to play. Or the fantasy football podcast right. that host called Game. And then you're about to control that music directly on the watch. So it's basically a music controller for Spotify. I want to show you the Google Play Store very quickly. So it's not the full version of the Play Store, it's the Wear OS version. So all apps are optimized to work for smartwatches. So first of all, if we look at the featured apps for Wear OS, you can see Spotify installed at the top. You've got Cardiogram, Komoot, and you've got so many other apps. You can see there, Calm, Facer, Swim, Watch Face app. So if you wanted to track your fitness and have Google Fit, you can do that. You've got Google Pay. Now you've actually got Google Pay. Now this watch has Samsung Pay for NFC payments. But if you preferred Google Pay, you've got the option there because this is running Google's Wear OS at the end of the day. So you can switch to Google Pay if you prefer that better. Now City Mapper, Telegram, Podcasts, Republic, all of these apps are there. Track your workout. Now this is quite important for most of us. Adidas Running, Strava Tracker, Nike Run Club, Cardiogram, Calm 7, Life Sum, Wake Up Well, um, seven minute daily, run more, so on and so forth. Um, and then you've got your accounts and settings. So that is the Google Play Store in a nutshell. So let's also check out Google Maps and show you how that works. So it's found my location. So it didn't take long to find my location, but you can also search for stuff. Just type in petrol and hit search. So these are all the petrol stations. We just choose any random one. I want to see if it gives you turn by turn. So. There's your choices, car, walk or cycle. We're going to be doing car and you can see it's starting the navigation. Now what it's actually done is it's opened Google navigation on my phone. So you're not going to get turn by turn navigation on the watch, at least not with Google Maps. There might be another app for it. Um, I know the Galaxy Watch 3 does turn by turn navigation. There are a few apps there, um, but I still have to find an app that works. Um, and you can see that's still loading. All right, so now we're going to test out the health sensors. And the first thing we're going to test is the heart rate sensor. So there's the heart rate sensor. This is my O2 ring. It's a medical grade heart rate and blood oxygen sensor. It does both at the same time. So wearing this on the same hand. So 97% blood oxygen and 80 beats per minute heart rate. Now let's tap measure and see what we get on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. 86, and I kid you not, it said 86 there as well. That's gone to 85. Super accurate heart rate sensor. 86 and 86 were measured at the same time. But the thing is in real time, my heart rate has now gone down to 84 but this has stopped checking. So this is not continuously checking my heart rate. It's checked it once, it's given one score, and then it's stopped. If you wanna check it again, you can tap measure. So if we keep this like that, you can see both at the same time. 86 is what we're looking for, 86 or 87. 86, oh, that's gone to 87 higher than average resting rate there you go 85 so super accurate heart rate sensor no problems there now we're going to test out the blood oxygen so let's go back and let's find the blood oxygen monitoring which i think is here so here is the blood oxygen measure stay still i guess i moved around too much 97 percent on the o2 ring let's see what the watch gives us So we've got 97% on the O2 ring. Let's see what the watch gives us. I know I'm moving around a lot, so if it's, oh, look at that. 97 and 97. This is a medical grade sensor, people. And the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 is super accurate. 
Again, you can see my blood oxygen has gone down to 96 now, because that's real time, because it does drop high and low. But this will only measure it once and then stop. I don't see an option for continuous monitoring, but you can do it manually as many times as you like. So that was a blood oxygen and heart rate. Now I want to test the blood pressure monitoring. So I've got my blood pressure monitoring kit. I don't know if we can do this at the same time. I'm going to try. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to tap this, measure and measure. All right, so that took ages. We've got 131 over 86 and 153 over 106. A much higher result here. Um, now, usually on these type of machines, you have to do it at least three times to get an accurate result. So second attempt results, 143 over 101. Now, some of you might be thinking, man, he's got some high blood pressure results. Um, this is not wrong. This is correct. I have got hypertension level two or something like that. Um, I have slowed down completely. One video a week, two videos a week, barely. Um, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy the process, but my health has been affected. So I am taking a break. Attempt number three. All right. So that's my third and final result. That is going to be the most accurate result that this thing can give me. Take it off my arm 147 over 102 now we're just going to do a blood pressure test at least twice on the watch and see what type of results we get so measure yep sit still 145 over 97 you guys tell me how accurate you think that is now that is pretty accurate i would say um, i'm going to do it again one more time so this is my third test on the Galaxy Watch 4. There you go, 142 over 95. It also warns you, do not change your medication or dosage based on the watch readings. Always talk to your doctor first. So do keep that in mind. Take it with a pinch of salt. They're not saying anywhere that they are medical grade standards. You can check your blood pressure um, and just take it with a pinch of salt. 147 over 102 with one of these regular machines. Um, yes, this is hypertension stage two. It's just a one lower than critical. I'll put the chart on the screen and you guys might be thinking, how the hell is Chiggs got this score? Well, it's happened. Um, health has caught up on me and it's quite a dangerous level, I've been told. I need to fix up and I have fixed up. I am working out uh, regular walking, cycling. I'm trying to improve that heart. So there you go. I I'm just sharing this personal stuff with you guys. Um, this is a watch review. Um, I don't want to make it too personal, but I'm just keeping it real. If tomorrow I disappear, then you guys at least have an idea of what happened to the guy. So there you go. I got nothing to compare the ECG to, so I don't have any medical grade ECG to test this with. So let's just record it. So make sure the watch is tight, hit OK, and lightly put your finger on the button. And you can view the entire report on your phone. So if we just grab the phone, there's the last ECG report. 80 beats per minute, you've got the date and time, and there you go. And you can also go ahead and share this report or even view it as a PDF. And there's the history of the blood pressure results. You can see it's quite consistent actually with the heart rate and both readings, systolic and diastolic or whatever you call it. So in my opinion, very good health tracking from this watch. Um, when the Galaxy Watch 3 came out, there were a lot of things that weren't quite there, not ready yet, available in China, but not available anywhere else, um, Korea. Uh, but this time, globally, all the health features are working. Um, as long as you connect to a Samsung phone, that is all they want you to do. They want you on their ecosystem, grab a Samsung phone, pair up to it, and everything will work like it should. Um, it's a great experience, let me tell you. I really like this watch. I've got an 8% battery left. I wanna now take this opportunity to show you what the battery saving mode is. Power saving mode will do all of these things. Turn off always on display, limit CPU speed, decrease brightness, limit background network, uh, location, syncing, blah, 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 no software updates, etc. 
So power saving is now on. It looks like the regular full Android mode. I showed you what all the limitations are, but everything else works fine. So all your health tracking is there, all your apps you can access. Everything can be accessed, including all of your apps, the Play Store, the watch faces. Um, apart from all the limitations that they mentioned, everything else works fine. So yeah, you could actually have it on power saving mode always if you it just wanted a better battery life. So that brings us to my top smartwatch chart for 2021, allowing you to compare the specs and prices of all the latest smartwatches and also seeing how they compare with each other. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that the new Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic deserves the number one spot on my chart as the best smartwatch you can currently buy. It has a premium build quality with military standard durability, including IP68 and five ATM certifications. The new hybrid Wear OS with Tizen looks amazing and performs very well. Every negative point which I pointed out for the Galaxy Watch 3 has been improved in this new watch. So for example, in my GW3 review video, I said not enough RAM, old specification, old processor, um, not enough storage. And guess what? Samsung has given us a brand new processor with a faster clock speed, upgraded the RAM and given us double the storage. I also complained about the battery life in the GW3 review, stating that it only lasts 1.5 days. But unfortunately, whilst the Galaxy Watch 4 does have a slightly bigger battery, the battery life is not better. And I'm hoping that a firmware update can improve things. But as it stands, the battery life is on par with the Apple Watch, meaning you need to charge the watch every day. So overall, I really like this watch. You have Samsung Pay, but the option to install Google Pay is also there. Bixby is in charge and there is no sign of the Google Assistant. I feel this is something that Samsung needs to bring to the table and I think the people should have a choice. And given that choice, most of us will probably go for Google's voice assistant over Bixby. I certainly would. Now the health tracking is the best I have tested on any smartwatch to date. It's accurate and fast. Now the price is actually not bad for what you are getting. The design and build quality is amazing. You have a beautiful large Super AMOLED display. The specs are so good, the performance just flies. There is no lag, just a smooth performance no matter what you are doing. Now it's strange that a watch of this size is using a 20 millimeter band instead of a 22 millimeter band. But saying that, it has not affected the comfort on my wrist. Now this watch, does not work with iOS, which is a bit of a bummer. And for full functionality, you need to have a Samsung phone. Now, if you're not bothered about ECG or blood pressure monitoring, then you can use this watch on any Android phone and everything else works fine. So the iOS restriction is a bit of a shame. If this changes with a future firmware update, I will certainly drop another video to let you guys know. So bottom line, this smartwatch is a marvelous piece of technology, so beautifully designed and put together. It works so well in many different ways. I love wearing this watch and I love checking my daily fitness. There is motivation within the software to keep you active and moving. So much thought in the design process and more importantly, the software side. Samsung has nailed it with this watch. Now I just wish for some compatibility with iOS as that would make things a bit more fun for me personally. Otherwise, Samsung has done an incredible job with the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. And with that being said, I will leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out. And if you like it, you can of course pick one up for yourselves. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.